Shall we get to it? Birthday Nothing boy. says Halloween could belated birthday boy. Quite like a spooky, delicious recipe. So it's time to make some. Oh, I knew you were going to make me say it. Ghoulish goulash. Ghoulish goulash. Just you heard like it here that. First. Yes. We're doing it with personal chef Bill Collins from chefbill.com. There's American goulash, there's Hungarian goulash. I don't think ever before there's been ghoulish goulash. Well, that's because, well, I invented it. So, uh, and I, it, surprisingly, it's identical to Hungarian goulash. <laughs> so, uh, it's I, the best kind of goulash. It, yeah. goulash. It, it really is. And goulash actually just means stew. I'm sorry, no, it means hunter. I hunter. had the hunter. Sort of like chicken cacciatore is a hunter. A cacciatore means hunter. Uh, chasseur, as we all know from French, means hunter. <laughs> so e everybody has a hunter stew. So in this case, uh, this is the classic Hungarian goulash, which is a hunter stew. And what they all have in common is a meat and tomatoes. So, but the case of the Hungarian one, uh, it's got uh, paprika, and that is the big difference. And so all of the foods today are from our friends at Whole Foods in Hadley, uh, including obviously the meat and the paprika. Now I notice you have Hungarian paprika. Do yes, you need there, to have that kind? Uh, it is preferable for this dish. There's so many kinds of paprikas out there. Uh, a lot of times you get a Spanish paprika. Those are often a little bit sweeter. Uh, I prefer the Hungarian because also there aren't artificial colors in it. You see some of them and it's a bright red. You need sunglasses when you're cooking with it. Whereas <laughs> neon in, red. Neon red. Whereas this case it's just it's a classic. It's a chili. It's a, uh, a chili powder. Uh, a pepper actually. But and it's so, a mild taste. Oh. It's so incredibly mild. So when you think of like like uh, 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 ground up peppers, you think of hot peppers taking your head off. It, it's very mild, it's sweet, and if you were to taste it, you would say, that's not going to make a hot chili. It's not supposed to. All right, perfect. And so what I've done was, that I, I, for the, uh, the beauty of live television, I've d reversed this a little bit. I usually cook the onions first, and then you brown the meat. The reason I did this, I wanted to show one of the key steps. And this is really important to adding flavor uh, to it. I've combined here uh, the paprika and caraway seeds. And caraway seeds, often see them in traditional rye breads or Jewish rye breads. Mm -hmm. uh, that adds a nice body to this. And the paprika is going to add a mild sweetness, but also add some good color to it as well. So I've already combined the paprika and the caraway seeds. I like to put that in uh, with the onions uh, and garlic in there already and stir it around and really get it mixed up in there as opposed to just putting it in with the liquid ingredients. And there's a main reason you want to do this. You're going to have more direct heat from the pan going to the, the, the peppers, uh, going to the paprika and the caraway seeds to bring out more flavor than just dumping it into the liquid. Oh, okay. So you get more of an oomph just from that one step. It's fine if you dump into the liquid, but it's even finer, a little bit more flavor. Because you're instilling it directly into the mm -hmm. onions and Exactly, put it right in the onions, and you've got more direct heat from the pan, and it's just hitting it with a higher temperature huh. than the simmering liquid. And everyone's gonna try it and say, wow, this really has some oomph. That's mm -hmm. right. And then you won't tell them the secret that you put spices and hit the direct heat. Yeah, exactly. I, gotcha. And, and so that's why, as I say uh, uh, in the recipe, which is on the Mass Appeal website, uh, to put it in at this step. And so that way, uh, uh, if you were doing this at home, and I recommend that you do it, I would uh, put uh, the, uh, the spices in with the, with the pep, with the onions, and I'd take them out of the pan and then brown the beef. But I wanted to show this part with the brown beef, and we're really ready to go. So at this point, it's very simple, is putting in the beef, putting in the tomatoes, putting in some water, and walking away for about an hour and a half. And, 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 and it's that simple. Is this something that you could make in a slow cooker? Would you recommend not doing that? Well, yes, you can. Uh, and a slow cooker, it will taste fine. But this is a better flavor because uh, you can brown the onions mm -hmm. uh, and also you can get the oomph from the, right. uh, from the uh, paprika the and the caraway seeds going in. If you don't do that, it's going to taste really good. But if you do do it this way, it's going to taste better. If you do it the Chef Bill way. And that's the only way. <laughs> but no, it, 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 it will just, well, not really. But that'll just give you that much better flavor. People, you'll get a bigger wow other than, oh, wow, this is good. You go, oh, wow. This that's really what good. makes it ghoulish. That's Put it. Put a little that, extra W the in that wow. That, that's it. That's exactly what you Chef want to Bill, do. Chef Bill, thanks. <laughs> we'll check in with you later. We'll finish this up. Also, a uh, nice shirt. Why, thank you. It's part of chef's coat anymore. No, it, it's part of the whole new uh, Chef Bill. The look. whole new you. The whole new me. I'm so in. I Earlier. always liked you anyway. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> well, me good. too. <laughs> you. Earlier, we talked about snow in the forecast. Yeah. I sincerely hope there is none, but why don't we check in with 22 News Storm Team. We're back with personal chef Bill Collins, chefbill.com, writer, all of that good stuff. We're continuing our ghoulish goulash. It's simmering. It's simmering as we speak. 
But we're going to make a side dish. We're going to do a side dish. And uh, I, vegetables this year, especially root vegetables. This isn't a root vegetables, but the local vegetables, they're just coming up. I've got here a Hadley cauliflower. And local cauliflower, the flavor is just so good right now. And uh, and, and it's local. It, it, it Everything you'd want. Now. Except I don't like it. I know. You don't like it. I'm going to change your opinion in about one minute. All right. Because a lot of people, you included, are very uncomfortable with how you take apart a cauliflower. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was looking on uh, YouTube the other day, seeing how some people do it, and they kind of hack away and cut it in quarters. And the thing with that is you end up with little bits of, of, of cauliflower. And I don't like the sliced cut edges. I like the, you the know, florets. little florets. And, which is actually, that word means flower. And the only time anybody ever uses the word floret is with uh, uh, cauliflower and broccoli. Yeah. So you can use that you know, next time you're at a cocktail party. I'm going to start using that in my everyday life. I, I, I think you should. But what you want to do is actually counterintuitive, start with it upside down. And you're not hacking away. It's a very, even though it's not cooked, it's not like you're cutting into a squash. Uh, you just cut down around the core. Now, notice where my hand is. It's up here, and the knife is down here cutting down. And so push it in there, and you cut back down around there, and you rotate it a little bit. And what you're doing is you're really, you're just taking out the stem. You're kind of coring it in a way. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking this out and see four cuts. Wow, I'm surprised they haven't invented a cauliflower quarter yet. Well, you know, that's what we can do next. Mm -hmm. That's our million dollar idea. That's it. <laughs> there it is, everybody. I'm going to retire. So now you've taken the core out and you've got all these florets here. You still got quite a bit of core, but now, again, with your hand over here safely, you can just start cutting out the florets. And just as, as many as you want, cut them all out. And I've already rinsed this. And see, so you're getting just a little bit of uh, broken up cauliflower, but not much. And you've got all the florets here, and they just come right out. This is brilliant. And one another great thing about all of this, especially uh, I don't know, Ashley, we've got your young children around. You're not really struggling with this, with with kids running around. Uh, you've got, and this is the last of the core that comes over there, and now you've got these florets without a whole lot of effort. Wow, because I love to eat cauliflower, but I never buy it because it just. It drives me nuts. Exactly. Now you can cut it up into whatever sizes you want. I'll cut this one See, up a bit. I used to quarter it, and you just blew my mind. I'm, I'm here for you. Thanks. And, and so, <laughs> but now the next step is to roast it. And just as I was mentioning earlier with the direct high heat uh, hitting the spices in the goulash, uh, by roasting this instead of just steaming it at a higher temperature at 450, uh, a little salt and pepper and a little olive oil on top, uh, less than 20 minutes. You know, turn it over a couple of times in the oven. It's going to cook through, be nice and brown, and just very flavorful. And we've been talking about this since the beginning of the show. Uh, for me, for years, I had it on 325, and it could go for an hour, and it still wouldn't be ready. So you're saying pop it up by 100 or so degrees, and you can cut your time in, in half. Exactly. And I used to do it at 350. I'd throw other vegetables in, and the cauliflower was always the slowest one to cook, and it could sometimes still be a little tough. It's cooked through, but not nice and soft and, and, and biteable. Now at 450, it's counterintuitive. You say, well, yeah. wouldn't it burn on the outside? No, you get a nice crust, as we'll see uh, afterwards. So it's just a very simple, fast way to do it. And also, uh, if you can come home from work, uh, 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 cut everything up and have it and cook it the next day. But have the vegetables ready the day before. Yep. So just as uh, you'd mentioned using frozen vegetables, this is uh, in effect the equivalent. You've already got it cut up, throw it in the pan, preheat the oven, and uh, come back uh, in a few minutes. And then you could use local vegetables that are fresh and I'm not going to be scared to cut it up anymore. Exactly. It's the easiest thing in the world and you're going to get so much of a better flavor having it being a, a local fresh cauliflower that doesn't explode in your hand. <laughs> And as opposed to uh, getting a frozen one. Frozen ones are, again, uh, they're fine, but this is, just gives you more of a wow with the flavor. That's and what we're it's going local. For. I'm excited to see how this is going to end up. So we're going to pop these in the oven. Pop them we're in the going oven. We're to finish up the goulash. We're going to try everything. And we're going to give you the recipe a little bit later on in the Get show. Get excited. Here. All right, coming up on the show. Welcome back to Mass Bill. We're back with personal chef Bill Collins, chefbill.com, and he's currently applying cheese to our cauliflower. <laughs> applying, applying, similar to, yes. to how I it's apply moisturizer. That's exactly it. <laughs> that you you well, apply Parmesan lost cheese. My appetite. Like you apply moisturizer. <laughs> oh. But this is the roasted cauliflower. You can see just how nice and browned it is. So I'm just to put a little bit on the plate like that. I snuck a bite, and it is cooked to perfection. It is, and look how, how it just it looks great, and it's just the direct heat roasting just brings out the flavor so well. 
and I happen to have here some of the ghoulish Hungarian goulash. That's the most ghoulishy goulash I've ever seen. It, it, it certainly is. And what I added was were some parsnips, also local, great local carrots. I mean, he's coming up local with the tomatoes and water. You don't need stock or anything. And you end up with this great looking Halloween stew. And it's a relatively simple recipe. Yes, it is. Because just as you like to say, set it, forget it. And I know yep. you invented that. I did. You do just do the few steps. It doesn't take a lot of messing around. Brown the beef, brown the onions, throw, the, throw in the liquid, the tomatoes and the water. And just before it's done, throw in the remaining uh, vegetables, uh, the potato, I forgot to mention, the carrot and the parsnips, and you're done. Now, next week, you were telling me, because next week's election day, next Tuesday. So yep. for your chef's secret, next week, I believe you said it's going to be uh, the Senate bean soup. Yes, perfect for election day. Uh, for the Senate bean soup, always popular, and it's a great, very simple dish also. I can't wait to try it. By the way, if you want a copy of this ghoulish recipe and more, just visit us online, mymassappeal.com. Thank you to Chef Bill. Thank yeah. you to our friends at DeRocher Florida.